Hello, welcome back to Topper Machine. I'm Josh Topper, and today is our follow-up video of making those big chips, turning that stub shaft down. That was a chunk of nine inch, 1045, and I turned that down to, um, the finish size was under three inch, I'll put it that way, because it was proprietary, they asked me not to film it, but I thought, you know what, it's the roughing. Who cares? Nobody's gonna know what it is. So I went ahead and filmed the, the roughing of it. And we had some really great questions and comments. Um, one of those was, why don't you do it out of two pieces? Why waste all that material? That is how the customer specified it. Um, surprisingly, I've had about three different customers in the last 10 years all design them this way, taking a big chunk and turning it down, making one piece. Um, and I think it's a, a failure thing. Um, I think that cus those customers I know for a fact, because I've talked to a couple of them and said, hey, why are we doing this when we could just do it, you know, weld a plate on there and machine it all afterwards. And they said, it comes down to a lot of the previous shops did not do the heat treat stress relieving after the welding and that caused embrittlement. So they just took it upon themselves to just design it out of one piece and it works, it works very well. They don't have the failures that you do with a welded stub shaft. So that's why we go that route. Um, we had some questions about the coolant placement. Um, you know, does it matter where the coolant placement is? And it does and it doesn't. So what you saw was I was generally running it above the part into the cut, dumping it down with into the cutter so it was hitting the cutter and it was hitting the part the material and i've tried many different things placement of the coolant you know where you spray it what what works best um you know everybody's going to say oh you you need to put it on the tool holder itself and putting in right into the tool and by going slightly above the ch the pitch of the machine changed you could see that it wasn't working as hard. You could hear it wasn't working as hard. So putting it just above was lubricating, cooling the part as well, but it was getting plenty of coolant down on the cutter. Uh, after each pass, I mean, I could touch that insert instantly and it wasn't hot. So that was great. Um, the part stayed fairly cool. There was still some heat that got into it. Hogging off that much material, there's definitely gonna be a problem there with heat. So it worked out well, the parts are done. Um, they were delivered on time. Uh, somebody asked, do I charge an, ex you know, an expedited fee for you know, rush jobs, a weekend jobs, things like that. It really depends on the customer. Um, this job, I said that it was, I got the inflated sh rate of the other shop. That inflated rate was, was very inflated. So um, I was very pleased with that. Um, but why am I always the last resort? That was one of the questions, you know, and I said it in the video, I'm 60 miles away. They think it's too far. I deliver to them. I pick up from them, you know, all that, and they still say it's too far. This is a common problem I have up here in Northern Wisconsin. Uh, and I think that's the common reason why a lot of shops up here have closed is because for some reason there's this magical border and we're just too far. So. It is what it is, it's a crappy situation, but make the best of it and work through. I had several comments about how cool it was to see that chip comparison and the change in the chip with the change in diameter, change in feed, change in speed. And uh, I, I'm glad you guys enjoyed that. I thought it was a really cool idea. Um, that was the whole reason I did it. So um, I was really pleased with the outcome of those chips. I mean, as I got got it dialed in, got the diameter down a little bit. I could get the feeds up and ch really work it. Um, I had one guy comment that I used the wrong insert and blah, blah, blah. And it, I, I just asked him right out plain, point blank right back. What would you recommend I use? I read these comments, guys. I do pay attention. Um, if you have a suggestion, make it. Um, you know, don't be a jerk about it, but make a suggestion. I will read it. And if it makes sense or if I can, you know, verify that, I will definitely try it. So please, you know, make, make comments and questions. Um, you know, they are very helpful in the, you know, the growth and the, the productivity here in the shop. So um, I appreciate those comments and, and uh, but just don't be a jerk about it. I mean, there's, there's ways to come across, you know, I, had that recently with somebody else 
But uh, anyway, moving on. Um, I think I pretty much covered the, the questions. Um, I had a few, few comments about why don't I have a deflector on here to keep the chips in the machine. It's easier to clean them off the floor than it is to clean them out of the chip pan. Um, and that chip pan was filling up fast. The floor was piling up fast. I mean, I would have had to stop multiple times during that part just to clean out the chip pan. So getting them on the floor, I could run through that and then clean up at the end. It just made it better. And, you know, just kick the chips out of the way. Uh, one other person did ask what I use for brooms. And this is a great question. I go to the Dollar Tree and I buy the broom head, the plastic little little broom head. Um, let me see if I can find one close by here. So this little broom head right here at the Dollar Tree is a dollar twenty-five. You know, it's not a dollar anymore. Everything's gone up. And then the handle is a dollar twenty-five. And the handles are pretty good. Um, over time, you know, you get a little kink in them, and they just snap right off, bend, whatever. But um, so for two dollars and fifty cents, this is the broom I use in the shop. And they work amazingly well. Um, I have several of them. You know, you just wait until your chips are cool and then sweep them up. They don't, they do stick if they're hot. As you can see here, I've got some, well, these aren't even stuck. They're just wrapped around the bristles. So, you know, that's stuff to watch for. But if they're really hot, they will melt in. But I mean, if you look at those bristles nice and close, they're not melted, they're just wore. This broom's been around for quite a while, so. Like I said, um, you know, hate to buy the Chinese crap, but from the Dollar Tree, these are the best brooms I've found for the shop. I've bought brooms just like this that I paid $15, $20 for, and they don't work half as good. So there's your tip of the day. So I hope I answered all the questions and comments. I hope you liked this follow-up video. Um, the next video, Saturday's video, is I start reassembly on the dragline crane. So we put the track rollers on and um, reassemble the tracks. Now I don't have the tracks on yet, so watch the video because there is a question at the end of the video for all of my viewers. And we'll see how, what hat comes of that with the answers. Um, kind of excited there. Uh, over the weekend, we worked on putting up the poles for the sawmill shed, drilling and setting the poles. Um, it was almost 100 degrees here, so that was pretty miserable. Um, let's see, what other videos do we have coming up? We've got an upgrade to the radial drill over here, and then a radial drill job um, that I do on, you know, an actual job I do on the radial drill. So that's coming up. Um, I can't think of what else there is. There's a few videos I've got shot already. Um, you know, since we set the poles for the sawmill shed, I need to make a bunch of parts for the sawmill to be able to use it now because we can't get the tractor close enough to the for the PTO shaft. So now I've got a bunch of parts to make for that. So I'll be filming that. That'll be coming up, uh, well, after the, the shed video. So I'll probably be doing that this week. So with that, that's what's been going on. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, and again, check out our video Saturday with the dragline crane. Thank you everybody for sticking with me all these years and helping grow the channel. And with that, until next time, get out in your shop and get it done right the first time.